Life isn't perfect, and neither are we. Nope. But we know how to face our fears. And have some fun. And talk about all the messiest things of life. Like the messiest things. <laughs> get connected to yourself, get connected to others, and get connected to the life right in front of you. This is The Connected Life with Justin and Abby. That's me. That's you. And you. I know that I should feel bad about what I just did, <laughs> but I don't. I don't know where this is. Yeah. My favorite part of the podcast is I never know where you're going when you start things. You don't. <laughs> nope. And I won't. And I'm it's a mystery. The, and I'm the one that edits the podcast, so you can't stop me from putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't. I, uh, I, uh, I just had an everything bagel. Mm-hmm. Oh, which wasn't mine. Um, the, the office fridge. Oh, uh, had had it in it. Ooh. Um, and uh, somebody's gonna miss their breakfast. It's the second day. time I've had an everything bagel out of there. Um, <laughs> so now that's two that have disappeared. Oh and I think that in the workplace, probably there's a lot of people that experience this, like food theft, <laughs> where they go and they're like, "Who ate my bagel?" And you're like, "I don't know who ate your bagel. Is there anything in my teeth?" Right. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> But I'm thankful. Do you, repli- do you replace them? You know, sometimes. I'm going to replace them. Uh, here's the thing. I don't often eat something without replacing it. Yeah. But it's when I'm starving. It's not like I go there and just like forage all the time. It's like, oh, no, I'm in that sh- like that panic attack mode and I really panic need attack. food. Yeah. Where it's like you're that hungry. You're about to go into a panic attack. Mm. And I'm like, hello, everything bagel. I think you're Andy's. And Andy is my friend. Andy, if you're listening, <laughs> we owe you. <laughs> I have replenishes LaCroix. So. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> good, good, good. If I took one, I gave him a whole case back. Oh, that's nice. So you I got was, interest. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He got interest on that. So that happened today. So that's what this podcast is about. <laughs> Stealing mm-hmm. and your lack of guilt. <laughs> <laughs> what, are we, what are we actually talking about today? See, okay. usually I can intertwine what I have to say into what we're talking about. <laughs> Not today. Nope. Nope. Just nope. But my random. belly's full and I'm ready to have this podcast go down. <laughs> okay. I am super, super excited about our podcast today. Today we have um, some special guests, which I'm going to introduce in a minute, but um, I I'm sure if you've listened to our podcast, you have heard that we are running our second round of Living Fully Alive. And don't fast forward, because if you fast forward past this little conversation right here... You're going to miss all the goodness. What? Yeah, you, it won't make sense the rest of this podcast. That's true. So um, we, I ended up wanting to... There's so many incredible healing moments that are happening for people while they're going through it. And because we did the immersion program this year, in the immersion program... Uh, people are involved in community heart sinks every week and live life consulting every week. And what that does is it creates weekly moments where you're getting to connect to other people through what what they're going through and what yeah. is happening inside of your world. Um, and then you're learning how to bring love and healing to other people. You're, you're learning skills to be able to connect to people in their pain. And then you're also yeah. being connected to in your pain. And there's been incredible healing moments. And so I actually thought like, n- it's hard to know, like when we say like, Oh, we have a course, like, what is that? So we're going to actually in this episode, play a couple of the healing moments. Cause I knew when they happened that so many people out there would actually be able to connect to the pain of it and the healing of it. It's kind of similar to when we've played some of your stuff in the past. Yeah, where I had my my grandfather's message of, of right before he had died and him processing some of that and us also sharing, yeah, some of my stuff with my dad. And, mm-hmm. and so we're going to have some live moments that you get to actually experience the healing process that people are getting to experience in LFA. But we have, um, it, it's kind of cool. We picked two moments that w- this one couple has been involved in, both of them. And they have been such a fun part of doing Living Fully Live. I like getting to like know people through the the course yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of fun to get you start to see people's names and you start to see their faces and learn about them and it's that's really fun for me and so um this week we have nina and francois as our guests welcome guys hey and they have been this is your you're doing living fully live and so we're just going to jump in and get to know you guys so tell us a little bit about who you guys are I'm Francois. I was born in Quebec, Canada, but moved to the California West Coast when I was about four. Um, Been on married for just over 20 years. Oh, Um, guys, you guys look young. Were you babies when you got married? Oh, yeah. Basically. I was 19 and he was 20. And um, 
yeah, everybody thought we were brother and sister when we were first <laughs> married. It was awesome. We would be until we kissed. Until we kissed, and even then, the junior hires we worked with were like, "Uh, we're confused." Uh, <laughs> we were like, "Ew, guys, come on!" And yeah, see this ring on the finger? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So. Yeah, and um, we had some moments that brought to light the fact that we needed an emotional journey about <laughs> 10 years ago. Um, so we have. So we've sought counseling and um, advice and shared um, with each other and grown a lot and um, came across Abby at actually a Bethel service and then listened mm-hmm. to The Connected Life. And that led to doing LFA, which has been wrecking our worlds. So, yeah. Killing me, not softly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, why don't you tell us about what happened 10 years ago and then the journey you jumped into? <laughs> oh, um, we actually had a friend from church over at our house. And you know those times when you wish maybe somebody was around to hear what was going on so that you could have some ammunition or you wish nobody was around so they wouldn't hear. Well, she happened totally. to be around when something went down. Yeah. And essentially, she told on us um, to our pastors <laughs> in a very loving way. And, um, you know, our, our church, I'm really grateful. Um, don't throw people away. That's not what they're in the That's business cool. of doing. So Love they were, that. Yeah. So they um, took that as an opportunity to offer some help. And we took it up. We, we'd been part of the church leadership working with um, college-age students. And so through that, we got to participate in some of the counseling with uh, um, the people in church. And that's kind of started the journey. Yeah, our friend Jen um, uh, uh, pretty much was like, wow, guys, so either we talk to somebody else about this or we talk to somebody else about this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like, you guys, I'm <clears throat> trying to nicely say you're a shit show. And um, <laughs> kind of, yeah. And she was right. <laughs> and she was totally right. And it's not, it's not like we, that was our trigger that like suddenly we were like, what? There's something wrong. It was more, for me, I think I really felt like, God, finally, oh. finally someone is seeing right. what is happening for us and we need help so bad. And we mm. had tried to get help in the past and just been at it. Yeah, unsuccessful in receiving help just from other church families, other friends, other our even our personal families who just didn't know how to help us. I mean, yeah. to meant be fair, well. me, yeah, meant well, just did not know how to meet us where we were at and to keep loving us well. So, um, wow. Yeah, so that so, was like rip the bandaid off. Ooh, yeah. It's out of the, it's, but actually I know so many people that that moment, it, even though the moment they're like scared of like what is it going to be like now um, mm-hmm. is so liberating because now you can get the help you need. For sure. We're eternally grateful to Jen Sweet, who is now Jen <laughs> Kathy, who brought everything she learned to us and changed our life. So Aww. someday she's going to listen to this and I'm going to be like, you were on the podcast, Jen. That's amazing. OK, so and you that- guys. Oh, go ahead. And, so they, and that happened about 10 years ago. So we had uh, three of our kids at that point, and we have three more since then. So six. we have a total of six kids. So doing all of that journey and work has been in the context of obviously taking care of them as best as we knew how. And I'm going to try and hold on to that phrase personally as best as we knew how. And we just keep learning better how. <laughs> That's so, so real for everyone. This is what I tell every parent. There's no point in trying to be perfect. Every year you're going to learn something you didn't know the year before and then you're going to learn something. And so the idea is you got to get comfortable being like, I was doing the best I knew. And now, and um, Maya Angelou always says, now that I know better, I do better. Yeah. We, we quote that regularly in our home when trying to maintain composure. (laughs) Now I know better. I can do better. (laughs) Okay. Uh If you were going to say like, what are the things that individually you've both been working on in your individual stories for the last 10 years? Hmm. I wish you guys could see their facial expressions. (laughs) (laughs) They're adorable. Deep thought. Um, Yeah. I think for me, a big part of it is self-criticism and perfectionism Mm. and not having grace for mistakes. Mm. Um, But all of that, as I'm learning in LFA, which of course we'll be talking about, is rooted in the places of lacking maybe love and comfort and needing to control myself and my environment so that I 
can be lovable. Um, mm. So, you know, yes, we talk about perfectionism and criticism, but that's really, I think, just one of the outer layers of the onion. And mm. I'm still working for water to trickle down to the dry dirt on the inside there. Mm. Oh, that's a good way to articulate it. Very yeah. beautiful picture. That was beautiful. I don't know how to say mine. <laughs> um, uh, the journey, um, probably really, for me, feeling really disconnected. And feeling like I've really shut myself down. And um, uh, the course of having lots of babies is a very taxing one physically and imagine? emotionally yeah. and mentally. And um, we have three, we have a 17, 15 and almost 13 year old. And then we have wow. a gap. Yes, ma'am. Um, then we have a gap um, of about seven years. And then we have a five, a three and a five month old. Wow. And so, we are parenting teenagers, junior hires, and um, almost, you know, kindergarten, our youngest of our, our oldest of, of round two um, <laughs> is about to go to um, uh, kindergarten. And then we have toddlers and babies. And so, wow. It is a span to say the least. Well, if you did it, if you did things right with the first three, they'll be able to raise the second three. And you guys are like on easy street, anything. right? Did you have part about doing the best that we could? And like the other half of that sentence is there wasn't much that we could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would say definitely like um, when Francois found um, Abby, he, we heard you on um, a worship you teachings mm. and we loved those. We were like, who is she? <laughs> Many tears were shed. Yeah, it was it was very profound for us. And then Francois happened to go to a Bethel service and you happened to be speaking and oh. we didn't know ahead of time. Wow. Wrecked his life. Oh. And then um, and then uh, he was like, these people have a podcast. I'm going to start listening to it. And I was like, well, you have fun with that. I have no audio time in my life as I have people talking to me every second of every day. And if you don't stop talking to me... <laughs> This is going to be over. <laughs> I'm so, going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. So, um, uh, but he was like, and he just started, like, he listens to him when he's out riding his bike. Um, mm. And he says, and he'll come home and be like, oh, God, babe, I just have to tell you about this thing that they said. I think this is changing my life. And I was mm. like, okay. And so as he continued to share with me, he was like, well, you listen to one. You just listen to one. And I was like, Yes, I will listen to one. <laughs> and so, gosh. And, um, oh, yeah. And, like, so many things were just like, oh, oh my gosh, this is so good and so loving. And um, I think that that's the main thing is finding that place in receiving information that feels loving and and kind and um, uh, that I really appreciate about what you guys do. And so, um, and we were like, and then when we started hearing about LFA coming up, um, Francois was like, I think I might have to do this. And I, <laughs> I was like, have to. <laughs> this, I love that. this is the thing I have to do. And so I asked him to tell me a little bit more about it. And within a very short amount of time, I said, I think I also have to do this. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, really? Because I have so little time, so little capacity our life is crazy town banana pants. <laughs> At the time we had a one month old. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Very tiny. Which little is person. crazy that you'd say yes to you, jumping into a course. And you're not, yeah. Mm -hmm. Your body is the not correct your own. word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crazy is the right word. And also like it, you know, just having had a baby, um, hormonally, you're kind of in oh. an interesting spot. And, um, Oh, I hear you girl. It's, <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I knew you'd have my back on that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Justin can relate, ladies. Oh, totally. He can relate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it just it just blows you so far open, and in some ways, that's such a gift because mm. you are so tender. You're so connected to mm -hmm. this other little person and to the other things that are happening around you, and um, I think it really was the right timing for us to step in and um uh yeah and so um yeah we signed ourselves up offered the big kids lots of incentives to help <laughs> us with the babies and um they are uh they are making this happen and also reaping the benefits of it that's cool in real time mm. so wow. like verbally able to even recognize and be like this is 
this is different. You guys are different people. What? Really? Then, mm-hmm, yeah. I would love to tell you about that. Tell, <laughs> tell us about it. Okay, I will right now. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, our oldest, well, I would say for you, why don't you tell them why you decided to do LFA? Like when you, at the very beginning of LFA, they ask us questions mm-hmm. about like, what's your purpose for being here? Or what are you thinking about like how this is, you know, what, what do you want to do this for? And yeah. And for me, the kids really were part of the reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we said, our oldest is 17. I mean, for better or worse, COVID is meaning that she's probably going to stick around in our house for a little longer than we expected. <laughs> um, but I saw my time drawing short with her. So mm. um, I just, I knew that I didn't have time to screw around with letting my woundings, my empty places, wow. my hurt places continue to wear or completely destroy my relationship with wow. you know my 16 and 17 year old daughter. So wow. um, LFA was really kind of part of my, I guess, plan vision for getting into my heart and mm. I'm doing what I can to save the last year or two years that we've got her at home. Wow. That's I, incredible. As, as a side note, I love that as a father, mm-hmm. you're, you're proactively in that space mm-hmm. doing that. And, and a, as a husband, because I mean, I think men sometimes get a bum rap in some ways, gen- generally yeah. speaking about not being engaged. And I've seen a lot through doing the connected life and the liberation project that I did um, a lot of men actually want to show up. Yes. They don't know how to, they don't know where to get the help, but when they have access to it, they run after it. And it's really beautiful to see those, those masculine champions show up in those roles in the way that we were always meant to be. So I love Francois that you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep pressing. In. And even at times, even when Nina was like, uh, not interested, you're like, well, I'm going to keep chipping away at this yeah. and keep inviting her. That's cool. That's brave and courageous. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. He's such a stud. Um, Aww. It's true. Um, um, So that was kind of one of the big reasons that we, he decided to do this. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'm sure I'll get something out of this. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. I just like um, the breakthrough. Okay. So trying to stay on track. Um, The, uh, the breakthrough that happened recently was um, we're at, the th- like the three quarters of the way through LFA now. Mm-hmm. And um, we've been learning about um, validating and attuning and how we listen to each other and how we connect to each other. And it is definitely a new thing for us mm-hmm. learning about it, even though we have like talked about and learned about active listening <laughs> and some of those things. Those are garbage without this other piece. Let's just be real. A hundred percent. That is just crap. It just doesn't do anything. Oh, I hear you saying this. Who cares? <laughs> You're not listening to my heart. You're not really... <laughs> You you are ruining this. You're just um, repeating information back to me. That doesn't yes. make me feel loved. Yes. And so our kids definitely were like, they were never hearing our hearts. They were never, we were never giving them a space to like really, really talk to us. We did wow. not realize we were doing that, but we were like, oh, but we listened to them so well. We're so awesome at this. We're such great parents. we are great parents and we were super sucking at listening to our kids (laughs) and so it like as we started like listening on the live calls and on the heart sinks and watching people start like actively listening and hearing them do it for us we were Mm. like oh i see this is not what I thought it was. I have some new skills to learn. So mm. we start like we have been able to practice on each other and really have breakthrough for our in our marriage on places where it was like, you have not listened to me about this for 20 freaking years. Wow. And wow. you just heard what I said for the first time. And wow. that's amazing. And then um, uh, the, the teenagers um, are uh, regularly unhappy with us which is normal <laughs> and okay <laughs> um, it's it's it is okay that is no knock to them that is like developmentally they are doing just the yep. things they are supposed to be doing absolutely We're like, supposed to be you, pushing back exactly They're supposed to be trying to figure out if they agree or disagree mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and even cr- start creating that healthy distance mm-hmm. as you know our as the umbilical cord becomes shorter and shorter or longer and longer and or less connected however yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Rant, rant, rant. yeah. snip snip yeah <laughs> Um, and, um, uh, 
we sat down with our kids. We had a situation with them last week where we went to go have a date. And while we were gone, the ki- uh, the baby was losing her marbles and they uh-huh. kind of didn't know what to do about it. And different sets of expectations. But by the time we got back, World War Three had started and <laughs> um, they were like, they were like full on like, this is the end. And we are never going to trust you again. Oh. And oh, we wow. were like, and saying, and um, they were applying labels like abusively neglectful <laughs> of our baby and of them. Oh, oh God. We were like, whoa, whoa, that, everybody it, slow down. That is some and, strong language. We went out on a date. You guys <laughs> yeah, were left right. to manage and babysit a child. <laughs> yeah. Who is you're familiar with? Yeah. So anyway, so you can tell the stakes were pretty high at that point. Yeah, it was. And when like at first, you know, it, we were like, what in the world? These kids, who's who are their parents? What is going on? <laughs> and we were just like, this is t- this is they're horrible. So they're so they're wrong. You know, and, absolutely. Um, These are being, know, they're being dramatic. Exactly. And so exaggerating, name calling, Mm -hmm. what jerks, you know, (laughs) like all in the same sentence, you know. (laughs) And um, so uh, we asked them if they would be willing to sit down and talk with us. And um, a day later, a day later. And um, they did. The day later is the smart part. Don't for any parents who are listening right now, (laughs) don't rush your children into communicating with you. It's very good advice. Yeah, it's good. It's okay. Take a breath. Let them chill out. Let, let anybody you want to talk to. Yeah, right. Yes. Absolutely. This is not just for parents. This is for everybody. We used to just feel like all that. Don't let the sunset on your anger garbage like oh. made us have so many conversations that were just not necessary in the moment. Us and too. made it worse. Like, us too. Oh, yes. so much worse. So much worse. And so anyway, sat down with the kids um, and just said, you guys, we want to really, really hear you this time. And we're going to try and we might mess this up and please, you know, please let give us a chance. And they were like, OK. And um, uh, and we were, you know, of course, why would they think that we would be good at this if we've been just so terrible at it for so many years of their lives? Their totally. hope had been so dashed. Aww. They were so broke up inside. And we're like, that's really hard to be like, I've really broke up my kids on the inside. It's hard. It's hard coming to grips with that. Yeah. Okay. And really, a lot of that was directed at me because... I was the main infractor of not listening to them, um, Mm -hmm. of not validating them, you know, always finding a solution. So I'm, of course, hearing them and listening to them and then jumping into, well, here's what we can do about that, as opposed to, man, I'm sorry that your heart is hurting, you know, and and hearing what, Mm -hmm. where they're coming from and actually giving words to them for their experience. Right. And um, so, yeah, they, the the trust they had was that I would fix the problem and not that they, I would hear them or anything like that. I love the ownership too of that, yes. you know, Francois, because again, that can be really difficult, especially when it feels like, man, I'm, I'm the main infractor maybe that's being like looked at in this situation. And as a dad to humbly like bring all that down and be like, no, I'm going to own this. That's, that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And whether, uh, actual or perceived it is definitely perceived that way that's their experience so right. here we are validating their experience in their experience i am the main infractor <laughs> there's a good chance that i actually am so they're probably right i truly like the the episode that you guys do the ones that you do with your mom justin mm-hmm. were like so life-changing oh, wow. to me mm-hmm. i think to myself when i am talking to my kids now i go be justin's mom oh <laughs> I, can still love this. Hearing I, can that. I can listen i can let go I, it's okay i can stay here and listen to them and be like justin's mama i can do this and um like i just hear her voice sometimes in my head from the from the podcast and it is so helpful to me mm. so um uh just to be able to stay there and not try and rush ahead to find the solution to talk it through to bring in an example just none of that stuff is helpful to their hearts in that mm. moment. And so the end and the beautiful part of this story is that um, we were able, it took us like two hours and that felt like a really long time, but everything worthwhile takes a long time. Mm. Yeah. And um, love is long and yeah. grief is long and healing is long. And it just oh, doesn't, it just articulate. That's like a poem you just wrote. <laughs> Love is long and grief is long and healing is long. That could be just a poem. There you go. It's that's all for you guys. You can use that. (laughs) Um, And uh, 
it's try- trying to remember that in the middle of it is very challenging, but also yeah. very worthwhile. And so um, afterwards, we were able to wrap up the conversation and we were able to really listen. And they had to correct us multiple times throughout where like I would all of a sudden be like some you're checking, you know, my, to my daughter and my son, I'd be like, I'm seeing that you're it looks like you're checking out right now. Are you checking out? And they were like, yeah, you just did that thing again. And you ran over. You didn't let me respond. Wow. And I was like, wow. OK, all right. Can I go back and try again? And they'd say, yeah, go ahead. And so I would start again. And they also corrected us in other areas where it was like, you're saying it must be like this for me. But that makes me feel like I have to agree with you. Could you instead say, I wonder if so this good. is what you're experiencing? And then wow. it gives me an invitation to be able to respond or to say, actually, no, it's this way. And so we are now incorporating that into sort I of like our if. family, our family so language good. of how we do that. And um, and it was super helpful. So that's amazing. And then the next day we had another round, which I'm trying to like adjust my brain to like one time conversation it's is done, not right? going. I know. <laughs> Fixed. <If only. laughs> yes, we are finished. <laughs> Look at us go. Yes. Perfect parents. Let me put on my crown. <laughs> and really a part of that sentiment is how much energy and effort went into that. And I think it's totally. um, easy to miss how um, draining it is mm. to spend that much level of effort. And it, like for me, it is completely rewiring changing everything about how i talk and listen like it's like i mean there's not much else in relationships other than how we communicate and connect and so trying to rewire that was was a lot of i think mental and emotional work um and to set myself aside to be able to hear so i know for me it was extremely draining and it was like that's part of i think why it's like we're done, right? Like that was good, right? It's like, I have nothing left to give, right? And then of course, the next day, here we go, round number two. Um, Yeah, and round number two did not go as well as round number one. And it was, again, it's like, we have to just have so much grace for ourselves, which is something that LFA is giving us right now Mm. is we have people around us who are actively supporting us and telling Mm. us, you guys are okay, we are with you. You're yeah. not alone. Mm-hmm. You are, and you know, whether or not there are people who are parents, grandparents, auntie and uncle ages, young folks who are younger than we are mm-hmm. and who are like, like our kids in some ways and who, or who are a little bit ahead of our kids and who can look back just from a little bit ahead of where our kids are and be like, I remember being 17 <laughs> like it was yesterday <laughs> because I'm only 18. 18. You know? <laughs> 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 the the preciousness and the love I have for the young folks in LFA is like, oh, I just want to squeeze their faces oh, all the time. Totally. I just love them. And it's such a gift to us to have such a wide range of age range of ages within the course because so many people can connect to so many different pieces of it. Mm-hmm. And so we have felt, you know, we shared on this last heart sink, Francois was able to get on and share and be like, we are really struggling with our 17 year old and our 15 year old. And Mm. we feel so lost about it. And some, some people came right up next to us and just said, we are here. We're walking alongside Mm. you. Some, some folks came from ahead of us and said, you know, I've just done this with my kids. I have adult children. You guys are doing good. You Mm -hmm. can do this. We had some people come from behind us and walk up to us and say, you are like, uh, you are like the dad that I want. You are doing the work that I wish my dad would do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just all been really encouraging. And like today, it's a rough day today. Like we are working through the, the lies and the stuff that's coming up against us actively mm-hmm. today oh yeah i'm really grumpy today <laughs> i know we're talking laughing but really on the inside i'm really grumpy like, oh, i love the honesty of that oh my gosh it's so refreshing it is so refreshing this and but this feels that feels very realistic for the healing process and i love that you mm-hmm. guys are sharing it in real time because we can so often hear people's stories from when they're like they've been working on a journey for like five years and Mm -hmm. you're like oh well now you're good at all the listening and the communication and but in the middle of it exactly what you're saying is exactly how it goes when you're learning new skills 
It's like when whenever I have a new job, the first three months feel horrible to me because all you're doing is learning, 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 and it's constantly you're aware of what you're not doing every right, you. and you're stretching. And so it's the interesting when you're talking. I was like, even about how draining the first conversation was. I was like, of totally. And in two years, it will be so easy for you to do a conversation like that. I look forward to the day. <laughs> <laughs> and the process of having a really good one and then a really hard one. And then like this is what people don't understand is this is how relationships transform. It's not like one day you get an aha and then all of a sudden you're fixed and you never struggle again. Totally. And that expectation that we should be able to transform and heal that way ends up creating so much guilt and shame and condemnation. And then we're beating ourselves up. And then we also judge other people when they can't just get over it. And so it's like the interesting thing I hear is both you're having to have compassion on yourselves for learning. And I can hear you're having to have compassion on your kids for needing more time. And and that's really how we learn both is doing it at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. For me to learn yeah. compassion, I had to learn it on other people and on myself. You can't actually get to compassion without that. Yeah. Yep. And I, I agree that that's a big thing that I'm getting out of LFA. I mentioned that part of my healing journey has been breaking like uh, perfection and criticism and failure and mistakes not being okay so here i am making some of what could be considered like the biggest mistakes of my life right like i want to be a dad so much and these people are so precious and so valuable to me and i have mm. crushed their souls for so many years <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know i have one great conversation and then i crush their soul just a little bit less but still crush their soul the next day right so absolutely that compassion on myself and also understanding of where i've come from and what was or wasn't modeled for me. I and mean, this is all new for me. This is not something that I ever had. Yeah. Um, mm. And so having compassion on myself, but then like Nina said, having compassion on them because their brains are all being wired. And of course they can't all of a sudden see me as a completely different being because one, I'm not completely different yet. Mm -hmm. And two, yeah. they have this history that they have to overcome too. That's so real. yeah, that compassion on it's ourselves so and each other. Yeah. And I think, the next, like after that big conversation, um, that night, my 17 year old came into the room where I was uh, sleeping with the baby as she was getting ready to go to bed. And Francois was working with kids or something somewhere. And um, she came and laid next to me in the dark. And she said, um, and I could, so I couldn't see her face, but she said, um, I said, how are you doing, babe? And she was like, mom, you know, I feel like there's something really different. And I was like, oh, okay. Tell me more about that. And she was like, I feel like this is new, like this wow. has started something different and um, dad is different. Wow. And I was like, wow, you could tell him that. <laughs> I think that he would that really could maybe be from some hearing. encouragement for him. You see how I didn't say should? Yeah. I felt like such a winner. you killing I didn't it. Say should. Very yeah. good. And the kids told us it at the end of our first conversation with them they said my daughter said you know how on a map there's like a road like the dark black line and then there's a dot and it changes course wow. she said i feel like today was the black dot wow and i was like you articulate beautiful thing dang <laughs> like <laughs> thank you jesus for the things you have put in this child to be able to uh you know articulate something like that and that we can then receive it from her and my son was like yeah it's true and um <laughs> that sounds like how a boy would say it <laughs> yeah he's a quiet and stoic man so yeah. it was like he was like that was like you deep know for him it was deep mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a thing yeah so yeah that's incredible that's um this is how people change generational things mm -hmm. and that you guys choosing to pay a price for it now means that all of your kids will pay less of a price Mm -hmm. which is yeah. really beautiful we have to constantly look at like you know round one of children had some hard things that they were having to deal with because their parents us were not where we are now and we feel so lucky that we can offer something different to round two mm -hmm. and that is true but it's also like hope is not lost no. for round no. one oh you know <laughs> like yeah. it's it's so real. We have been able to go back on different occasions and be like, I see how this thing affected you. And I'm so sorry. Can you forgive me? And 
you know, I can't, and we've walked, we've walked through forgiveness in LFA where we're talking about, you know, how, how do you actually forgive someone and um, bringing up the tally of what, you know, what does somebody owe you? And um, in, in an area where you've been hurt and I've been able to say to my kids, I, I can't actually make this up to you. Yeah. There's, there's no way for me to repay to you what you have lost in this area for so many years. And, but I know that that, that can be met mm-hmm. for you and that um, I'm going to spend the rest of my life filling it now and um, trying to, you know, not take it, not filling it like Jesus fills the hole, but like just being aware mm-hmm. and yeah. filling the parts that are my responsibility to fill. And um, does that make sense? Yeah. Am I saying what I mean? Yeah. Like where there was a lack before that caused injury, you're trying to not create that same injury again. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I can't, I can't fill the debt but I am going to work on not re-injuring yeah. over and over again. So, so what, I, what, I, what I hear you saying is you sat down with the first three and said, hey, guys, we just want to clarify. You're the experiment. <laughs> and the other three are our deliberate do-over. <laughs> so yes. you guys have really paid a good price for these three. <laughs> oh, man. The bitterness would be palpable. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> but the, um, the cool thing is, like, me and Justin, when our – like. We were in, you were in your almost 30s when your parents started going on this journey, when your mom started going on this journey. But yeah, the, yeah. I mean, we're, I, was clo- I was closer to 30 yeah. when it, it started happening. And so the, the fact that you are getting this while they're teenagers, <clears throat> their brain's still forming. You've got seven mm-hmm. more years of their brain still forming. So you get mm-hmm. to be a part of the healing process. But I always think it's never too late. We just... Um, yeah. I was just talking to somebody today who's in her later 30s and her parents are doing this journey and it literally never – there's never a moment where having your parents be able to love you in a richer, fuller way doesn't deeply impact you. Yeah. We never that get out of word. that place. Like yeah. it, do, it doesn't matter how long you've been a bad parent. It doesn't matter how bad of a parent you've been. I'm not talking about you guys, but just to our listeners out there. It doesn't matter what you've did, done or how bad you've been. There's always time for you to change and agree with love and see it radically affect. And it's true because it's like my grandfather in his 80s on his deathbed, you know, has a few a handful of good words to say to my dad or some of his kids. And they're like, oh, my God, I didn't yeah. hear that my whole life. And it was just it, one singular moment of impact that happened. And, uh, when he engaged with love, so yeah, it's it should give. But a don't lot wait, of, people. Don't yeah, wait till you're don't done. Wait. Yeah. Don't, don't wait. Do not don't waste the time. Run, don't walk. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, do you want to? Okay. First of all, I want to set up the first clip that we're going to listen to. And the first clip, you were very vulnerable, Nina. Incredibly in vulnerable. sharing yeah. about some of the pain that you've had around miscarriages. Tell me what it has been like to be that vulnerable with people. So, if you guys don't know, the immersion program is set up over Zoom, so you get to know people's faces and you get to interact on a regular basis. Because with the immersion program, once a week you're doing live consulting. And once a week, you're doing live heart syncs. And so you're with the same group of people every week. And so you kind of bond together. Um, but but also very scary because it's people you don't know. So tell what it's been like to be vulnerable with that group and what it was like to share. Oh, man, it's been so life-giving. Like having a group of people that have um, a common language to talk about um, where we are at mm. has been so safety creating Mm. and um uh and having um i know there's a number of the members who are second time members Mm -hmm. and having those veterans there (laughs) has also been like you're gonna make it Uh yes the just the quiet voices of um of um confidence and um who are just a step ahead you know has been tremendous and so i've really appreciated that um and I am not, it's not hard for me to share Love normally. That. Um, I'm, a, um, I'm pretty open about things even when it is painful. Um, so for me, I was like, oh yeah, this will be ready. no big deal. Yeah. You know, I'm ready. <laughs> God, It was so, I thought I was ready. Um, and I mean, I was, I was, I was ready and it also was like really painful. So, mm-hmm. um, and also tremendously impactful for me. I love that. Okay, so we're going to listen to that clip right now. You know, with your body 
being like, if your body was your child and, and your child had a miscarriage or whatever, how would you treat somebody that you loved going through that? Uh, the correct answer is compassion and care for 5,000. <laughs> You're hysterical. Nina. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering, like, if your actual kid went through that, would you be mad at them for not being able to carry a baby towards to, to or whatever the thing was? Uh, absolutely not. I would, I would never blame their body or them. You yeah. know, that would be so crushing. I mean, that's, that's how it feels to me is crushing. So I would never want to do that to one of my girls or one of my sons and who they were with, you know. Do you, is it that you don't feel like you deserve the com same amount of compassion as your kids? Um, such a rotten question. Um. I don't know. I know the right, again, for 5,000, the right answer is no, of course not. Of course I deserve all the same things that they do. Like, and yet I don't, I don't feel that way. Yeah. I don't feel that way. I don't feel like it was out of my control, even though I can say that I know that it was out of my control. There wasn't anything I did that made me lose those pregnancies. Mm -hmm. Nina, I forgive you, sweetie. I forgive you. I forgive you. That was so out of your control. I'm so sorry for the years of accusation towards yourself that you felt, the years of feeling like I failed. I failed. I did something horrible. My body failed. What did I do? I'm so sorry for the places that you've hated yourself and your body that you felt like you, you failed those children that you hurt those children. I'm so sorry for the places you felt like a bad woman, a bad mother, a bad wife, the places you're like, I'm bad. I didn't do this. And I know what logic says, but I know what your heart feels. And I am so sorry, precious Nina. I see you. I forgive you. I don't see you as a villain. I don't believe you failed. I don't believe you failed them. I believe your body and you gave everything you knew how. I, I believe you were so brave and courageous and to be willing to get pregnant and to go on that journey. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> nobody showed me ever how to do loss i have no grid for processing through loss how am i supposed to do this how am i supposed to do it with a spouse how am i supposed to do it with other kids who don't understand it at all i don't even understand how you're supposed to handle loss <laughs> want you to say this body i'm so sorry what i'm so sorry and taking all of this out on you <laughs> taking this all out on you. there's a lot of pain inside there's a lot of pain inside and it's not your fault <sighs> Say that again. It's not your fault. Say it again. Come on, Nina. <laughs> Body, it's not your fault. Body, it's not your fault. Say it again. Body, it's not your fault. Say it again, Nina. Body, it's not your fault. That's right. We're shattering blame today. Body, it's not your fault. Say it again. Body, it's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Yeah. Say it again. It's not my fault. You're doing good, Nina. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. Say it, Nina. It's not my fault. Yeah. I won't take the blame for this. Uh, I won't take the blame for this. I won't hate myself for this. I won't hate me for this. Yeah. Yeah. As you're just sitting there, just letting that soak in, Francois, I'm sorry for the places of deep loss that happened for you, my friend. I'm sorry for the places where you felt like you lost portions of your wife in this process as she went into her pain and her loss and her self-hatred. I'm really sorry for everything that you felt like you were carrying on the side. I'm sorry for every place that you felt unseen as well. That it was like, oh, I'm experiencing like a very similar pain, but I didn't carry the kids and, and I don't feel may, maybe as seen either, especially because those children weren't inside of me. I don't know what your experience was, Francois, but I can only imagine being along in the journey, the places that you also felt overlooked as well, and that you also felt tremendous pain and the things that you lost, and the battles that you had as well, processing not only your own heart, but the relationship as well. And I just want to say, I see you too. Because there's space for you, and there needs to be space held for you, 100% as much for you as for Nina. I don't think I've given myself that space. I know you haven't. That's why I brought it up. Uh -huh. I could feel it. You don't have to be the strong one. Yeah. You don't have to shut down all of your feelings so that her feelings have space. You can both feel together. Mm -hmm. And I know it feels really scary. Like it's all going to fall apart. If one of us doesn't keep our shit together, it's all going to fall apart. You have permission to to coexist in your grief, to co-grieve, to lean on each other in grief, to share grief with each other. Okay, Francois, why don't you tell us a little bit about what it was like for you? Um, do you remember Justin actually like being like, this is as much for you also? How, yeah, how'd you feel about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that was hitting on a, on a spot, obviously, that Justin saw where it hadn't been as much about me. And I think that that's probably true in a greater context than just the miscarriages. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the things part of the immersion program is having a mentor that you meet with regularly. And so my mentor has been addressing some of that with me is um, recognizing, you know, holding the family together, if you will, or being the support and maybe not receiving the support. And, mm -hmm. and I think there's probably... A, a cultural aspect of especially miscarriages because I'm not pregnant. I'm right. not carrying the baby myself. I'm not experiencing the physical things. And there's such a great need. There's such a great hurt um, for Nina when she's going through that um, where I don't have that same tangible physical things. And, um, but the pain I think is really real. Um, you know, there's a loss there too. And so I really appreciated Justin seeing me um, and I, I think I can honestly say that I, I wasn't able to receive it all in that moment. Totally. It was probably the, the cracking of that door. It is not flung wide open. And that is partly because it's probably just a hard subject, but also because, like I said, the context of my life is having that type of um, approach, you know, in my heart or belief in my heart almost that, you know, I've got to hold everybody else together and there's yeah. like, no one really to hold me together or support mm. me. And so, um that's a that's a pretty heavy door to crack open. So um, I love what you're saying because um, this is what we see the process. It normally takes a lot of my clients. It's normally like two to three years before they've radically changed an entire belief system. Um, yeah. So they're like slowly changing the belief system. So I can see you like you're like I can hear different things like you're engaging this part of your heart and this part of your heart and this part of your heart. And you're like, it's still not 
open and I'm like, yeah, our our hearts and our emotions are designed to not be able to crack open immediately. It's for good cause because if if people could crack open their heart easily, they'd be over and over again just could their whole center of gravity could get thrown yeah, they'd back be thrown and forth. all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's our brains are meant to slowly change so you don't, you know, like have a new cult leader every week changing your entire <laughs> belief system. <laughs> like, we hold on to beliefs that we believe for a reason so that we have stability in our operating system. And so changing our operating system takes so much time and energy, but it's so worth it. I always think like, well, if I if it takes me two to three years to get my heart softened, but then I live 60 or 50 or 40 or 20 or 10 years getting to live from that, that feels so worth it. But I think yeah, that absolutely. it's very, what you're saying, I like it because it takes a long time to get out of the, when you are used to not receiving and you're used to just locking it in and holding it down, it takes time to trans to transform that. Yeah. Yeah. And even being seen and called out is kind of new evidence for my heart, right? It's like, right. hey, heart, you just got seen and someone mm-hmm. just, whether you received or not, someone just poured out love in your direction. <laughs> um, are you having, are you recognizing other moments throughout the course where you're being loved and you're having to <laughs> wrestle through receiving that? <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, um, today we were on our Saturday morning immersion call and, you know, it's a Zoom meeting. So you've got kind of one main conversation happening on the screen, but there is the Zoom chat going. Yep. And in that Zoom chat, I had some, uh, so a couple of people actually that messaged me in the Zoom chat saying, hey, how are you doing? Because I had shared on Wednesday, right? I mean, this mm. is like really, really fresh here. Yes. <laughs> like the, it's all like still bleeding here. Um, and so it <laughs> was Wednesday. Still raw. Yeah. <laughs> There's no bandy to pull off. It's still, it's still just leaking um so that was wednesday that we had the conversation with our kid or the blow up with the kids and we shared uh, that i got to share on that zoom call on wednesday thursday we had the kind of like win conversation and here we are on saturday and so we had some folks in the immersion program messaging me hey how is your heart how are you doing you know any breakthrough with your kids and i'm able to we're able to respond and say yes breakthrough and and no. really still tired and hard and yeah absolutely so um that would be another moment, just the fact that uh, there were people um, today that would out of the blue message me and say, Hey, how are you doing? That's, um, uh, uh, you know, one of them was a dude and a couple of them were, were ladies in the group. And to feel that kind of like love, that's mm-hmm. like almost like a mom love that mm-hmm. um, touches inside is, um, is meaningful. Yeah. Did it hit your little robot heart? <laughs> the little stony heart in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that it was affected you. Like when you're obviously just sharing right there. I'm like, oh, this. I wish this people could awesome. see your faces. You guys are it's great really, faces. Yeah. You're, <laughs> you have such good expressions. expressions. Yeah. Uh huh. I'm like, wow, that really hit. Yeah. Would you guys be willing, and you you can say no if you want to, but to share one place where you've been able to validate each other in marriage? Um, I've definitely seen like a, a shift for us in Francois's ability to validate me. And that's been longer. Like, I think that started when he started listening to the podcast mm. and then wow. it has just accelerated mm-hmm. since we've been in LFA. Um, and uh, having him be able to say to like, if I'm like, man, I hate everything. The kids are making me bonkers. <laughs> I'm hungry. I hate our house. I, you know, the sun is too bright and the grass is too green. <laughs> and, and, um, and he'll be like, you know, oh, I really, I really hear that. It must. And he, one of the things that he is so good at is going like, you know, our kids don't love it, but like, I love it when he says that must feel blah, 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 blah. I learn so much about what my heart is feeling Mm. and I'm, it it doesn't make me feel like I have to say yes. Whereas like our kids prefer somebody to say, they're still trying to find their voice. And am I right? The way I feel, whereas you're like, yeah, this doesn't trap me. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, it gives me so much freedom to feel. And so like Francois constantly says, man, that must feel a lot like that must really tap on your stuff about your family or that must really tap on your stuff about, you know, feeling like you're never going to be able to have a job or you're never going to, you know, any, you know, anything that is like, 
a long-term pain in my mm-hmm. life. He can see the connections and that's tremendously valuable to mm-hmm. me. And then I can, you know, be like, you're right. It does feel <laughs> like that. <laughs> and, you know, I can cry my eyes out for a few minutes and he can hold me. And then oh. I'm like, I feel better, honey. So Thank true. You. you know, and, and it feels, and then we're all warmly connected and oh. it's all gooey and beautiful. And that's awesome. So, How does it feel yeah. to be able to do that, Francois? Uh, amazing. Um, I think it is one of, I think even as a little kid, like marriage or, you know, having a deep relationship like that is something that I wanted. And so um, I very much value, appreciate and thrive on that connection. And so um, having that connection be more intimate um, emotionally, having that connection be more real as opposed to, uh, I don't know, I'm having this picture of like something that's being held up by like, scaffolding or something and it's not really held up by itself it's held up by other stuff and like somehow this connection is like more real it's not held up by needs it's not held up by the fact that we're parenting together it's held Mm. up by just the fact that we are having this heart-to-heart connection and that's really really good for me yeah i think that i think you guys are like poets Mm -hmm. I (laughs) I, i think that there's something for men that's beautiful when we can engage our families and our spouses in ways that we get to be one of the heroes in their journeys. I don't feel like there's a need for me to be the hero. I think that that's too much pressure to be the hero of of the story, but one of the heroes that we could show up like that, that's really fun because that when some when we can engage in a way that's so loving that it affects them and they're like, "Oh, you mean so much to me. This actually really affected me." I'm like, "Oh yeah, I got to shine for the people I love the most. It's really cool. Yep. Has it helped you guys having common language? Yes, we've had, I mean, I was a little bit ahead because I was listening to the Connected Life, you know, Long a couple of months her. before and, and more frequently. So I uh, moved through the episodes a little faster and, and it is a little bit like, oh, I wish you could hear this one episode so you would know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, we got to skip that with LFA. We're both in it. So absolutely, we get the same language. We know what we're talking about. It doesn't have to be like a an hour long explanation, you know, of basically resharing the podcast. <laughs> Let me teach you this so then I can actually entirety. connect with you. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree. And the, having the common language is um, just invaluable. Um, I mean, it makes, uh, I have a number of friends now who through LFA are like all across the world. I have a friend oh, in Sweden and a friend in Canada. You made from this, you're saying. From this, yeah. just from this, that we started messaging. And I talked to my girlfriend in Canada like three times a day. Oh. And, I, um, uh, and our kids play Mario Kart online together now. Shut up. So yeah, real story. That's and, amazing. Um, it is. And so we have these, just crazy awesome new connections with people and I can message them at literally different times of the day depending <laughs> on what the time is <laughs> which, where they which live country they are mm-hmm. exactly and be like hey this is really hard right now can you pray or hey this is really hard right now will you tell me that I'm going to be all right mm. and constantly people are now messaging us when we when we all talk to each other they say things like do you need is there something you need to hear right now that I could mm. say for you and that phrase is like real big yeah. and it feels real powerful yeah. and um for those people to be saying that to know that they themselves have within them something that they can share and that could meet our need and being brave enough to ask and say what do you need I see, I, I um, perceive that you have a need within you and I could meet it for you. Mm. And so it also then gives us power to feel like we can get our needs met. Mm-hmm. We can, we have, uh, and we have people who will help us meet the needs that we have. Yeah. What, so what yeah. I love is that we're developing a global community yeah. mm. where people are, let me back up. If you just randomly meet people on social media, you don't know what their value systems are and uh-huh. they could be total creepers. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is your Real intentions? Story. <laughs> what are you here for? But we're actually building a global health community of people that have a, a certain value system of health and, and value for each other and how we communicate to each other. And it doesn't mean that we're not a messy community. It means that we're a messy community that has values based around a very specific 
topic being emotional health. And so you begin to engage going, I feel so safe because they're already on the same page with me. I have found, it feels like family because they're already in that space. They're kind, they're compassionate, they're understanding, or they're moving towards those things alongside me. Well, and one of the things they say is like, whoever you want to be in five years is who you've surrounded yourself with. And I know so many people who reach out to me and they're like, I don't have any friends on the emotional health journey. I don't have family. I don't have a church that's going after this. And so I love that we've provided a greenhouse where there is people where you can meet and you can be like, oh, I'm not the weird one out. I'm not going on this journey alone because they say that, um, and we're going to do a podcast on this actually, but they say that you have like a 50% higher rate of healing faster when you're involved in a group um, that is going after healing together. Uh, And don't quote me on that stat, but when we do the podcast, I will have the perfect accurate stat for it. But, um, (laughs) but it scientifically, they've done a lot of studies around. That's why groups like AA or support groups for grief or whatever are so healing to people. And what it does is it breaks the shame. So I'm sure you guys have seen that, that like, when you guys are sharing in heart sinks, there's no more shame that like you're not put like now people are like, yeah, we're not put together because mm-hmm. every week you're hearing people are not put together. People are not put together. I'm not alone in this. Did you have yep, something you wanted not, to say? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think that shame lives in isolation and mm-hmm. aloneness, right? In hiding. And so um, just having a chance to share and not be rejected um, mm-hmm. drives a big stake in that shame. Yeah, I think there's there's still people who are, you know, we're almost at the end of LFA and there are still people who are for the first time saying anything in yeah. any of the meetings. And it is like for some people, it's because they're afraid. Some people like, you know, of rejection and some people have just straight up anxiety about being on a camera yeah. and like right. every time and talking and having their voice be heard. And every time someone comes on, the group goes back bonkers Aww. on come on. on the on the chat and on the zoom and we have this thing where everybody waves their hands because Aww. if you're in gallery view you can see everybody you know almost everybody all at once and so you know the moderators who are wonderful human beings mm. who i just they trust so much yeah they're um, all people we've trained i trust mm-hmm. them with my life i would mm-hmm. see them for myself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes thank you for doing that because that trickle down for us is tremendous. Mm. Um, And, uh, you know, we all just wave our hands and show them with our bodies and with our hearts and with our words on the chat. And we can just say, you know, so-and-so, you got this. So proud of you. Mm -hmm. You're amazing. You look beautiful. Your hair is great today. Cute hat. You know, like all... (laughs) So all th- we're voice. so happy to hear your voice yeah all of those things and it just makes it an immediate plug of confidence and, and love courage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yes and, and that um encouragement remains even if we share the hardest gnarliest things that we're going through mm-hmm. there's never like a there's never like a ooh. Oh, you crazy. You, um, I'm a, yeah, you probably should get some help with that. There's none of that kind of stuff. (laughs) It's always like, it's always affirming. It's always kind. It's always, um, uh, falling forward. It's Mm -hmm. always, it's just so good. So, so good all the time. We want an atmosphere where people can be vulnerable and learn love. And I've only learned love when people have loved me when I'm messy. Like when I get love because I did everything right, I didn't learn love. I learned performance. When I Mm -hmm. am awesome and people give me a huge round of applause, I'm like, well, yeah, I was awesome. (laughs) But (laughs) when I'm learning how to be vulnerable or risking or trying something I've never done before and people are encouraging and loving then. And and it is such an atmosphere where people are, are, everybody is learning too much. Like (laughs) LFA Uh is like a fire hose. Yes. Where it's like overwhelming you with so many things, emotions, with input, wisdom, understanding, all of it is happening. And so nobody is like, oh, I'm fine and perfect. And I'm totally getting all of this. (laughs) And I know how to do all of this. (laughs) And if they are, they're very dissociated. (laughs) But yeah. um, Yeah. I think that like I personally, I, I tend to be on that side of the spectrum. And so Mm. I know what you're talking about because I'm like, I get on there and I'm like, I'm excited. And my natural heart, um, as I'm an Enneagram two Mm -hmm. and, um, I'm, um, super codependent and I have a lot of problems (laughs) I found out. Um, but, uh, 
uh, you know, my heart is as a mom and as like I have a pastor's heart is to love people and bring them in and to make mm-hmm. them feel accepted and um, uh, just that they're okay where they are. Mm-hmm. Um, I also get that performing thing where I'm like, you know, I can be here for you. I'm, you know, Mm, let me rescue you, you know? (laughs) And then, you know, that ugly other side of it where it's like, you know, um, hell hath no fury, like a two unappreciated. And, um, uh, and, uh, it's just like uh, really early on in the, in the, in the calls, I, um, I definitely like, it was hard for me to be like, I have to lay this garbage down and not just be this mom for every human mm-hmm. I come into contact with. I have and to there be was like two. Uh huh. I think Ruth called me out at one point and was just like, I'd really like to just <laughs> encourage you <laughs> to. That's so rude. Yeah. To lovey, let me tell you, she would say. And, um, you know, that just to encourage good. me to just be, you know, there's so much more to you than just a mother, Nina it's there's so much more Mm. and um and i was like you know just (laughs) dissolving a little bit inside and then all those mamas on that call heard that and they private messaged me and they were like you do not have to be strong for this you do not have to mother everybody you are okay where you are at you are also Mm. a daughter you are also a friend you are also all these other things that need attention also and i was like and it was like do 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 like you know nerf gun bullets (laughs) all over (laughs) and it was it was awesome so yeah. I love it. And this is this is really the journey. It, the more we allow love and the more we give love, love can consume us. And that's mm. really when we're the most alive. Um, and there is a lot of pain in the midst of it. Like your journey is so real. Like I want people to know living fully alive doesn't mean all of your problems will go away. Nope. It doesn't mean that Our we problems will go away. magically <laughs> everything is nice. better. <laughs> I wish I could. I and I would love to sell it like that. That'd be great sales pitches. Uh-huh. But um, true, it's I have to be authentic, and so yeah. it's it really is not about your life becoming perfect. It's about becoming connected enough that you can allow yourself to give and receive love in the midst of life's messes, where you yeah. can actually. Mm not have to be alone and fighting and pushing through and and trying hard but you can actually receive the comfort in the midst of pain and yeah. and have um life and and feel even sometimes feeling pain is better than being locked down so True. um so sometimes lfa is painful for people but in a good way yeah yeah well- one of the things that uh, just a quick side note of what I was thinking is, you know how you guys are so enjoyable. Yes. I just love chatting with you. You're both so funny mm. and fun. And I think that it's cool because the way that we've built LFA is through the connected life actually. And so we have a tribe of people already connected to the connected life mm-hmm. who come and put up with our banter <laughs> and somehow enjoy all of that. Right. Mm-hmm. And you get those personality types. You get those, like, I just am who I am already going inside of a lot of this space. So it's, it's a community that's got such quality people mm-hmm. inside of it because they're already part of the message that's happening with the connected life. So mm-hmm. I love that. And I love yeah. that it's people like you, we get to engage with. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, we are fully living our dream right at this moment, talking with you guys. We were like, wouldn't it be so cool someday to be on The Connected Life? Yeah, that would be cool. And we're like, oh, my God, it's happening. It's happening right now. <laughs> You're like sending it to all your friends and families. We made it. I know, right? We've arrived. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things we have a great we have another clip that I want to have us play. Um, and it, it goes along the lines of what we're talking about, which is not only learning to to like Francois learning to receive love from people. And then, and like in our first clip, you being really validated, Nina. And then Mm -hmm. now this next clip is you getting to be a part of the validation for someone else. Mm -hmm. And, And this is what I like is it's really empowering people to, to practice on each other and to get good at loving each other and to try things out and to have a safe, you know, it's so much, (laughs) It is safer to practice with the LFA people than your teenagers, for sure. Totally. <laughs> for real. And it gives you some, a little yeah. bit more confidence. Like, you're like, these people, they have, they understand. So at least they're giving me grace if I'm not doing it right yet. Um, totally. What do you want to say, Francois? Yeah, just acknowledging that. Absolutely. There's, 
much less grace with the teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nina, do you want to just uh, kind of set up the clip uh, that that moment um, with yeah. just a 30,000 foot view of what like, happened? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, one of um, my LFA sisters um, came on and was sharing with the group how um, uh, just um, a deficit in mothering in her own life and feeling like there was so much she missed out on as um, an oldest child of a very large family, which I come from a large family and I have a large family and um, and I'm the oldest. She's the oldest. I felt mm. a lot of like connection to her mm-hmm. and understanding of where she was coming from. And um, I would say she was just experiencing a lot of, you know, needing to have that tenderness of a mom come alongside her and I felt so just in love with her heart at that moment and like I just felt like the overflow and was like I got some things I can help this girl you know I can come alongside her and show yeah, her love in I this can show up say for something. Her. I love that yeah. yeah and that oldest child you know was kind of taken to the extreme in her experience where um she was momming the younger kids through mm-hmm. some very hard situations right yeah. and so in the process of momming them she did not receive that momming relationship and support at the time and yeah that strike that strikes nina's heart very tenderly <laughs> indeed yeah. yeah and then at the end she, um she asked for ah uh, yes um we um We went on a walk together, like a, um, not virtual, but a visualized walk, so Mm -hmm. to speak. Um, And at the the, end of- In imaginations. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, That that mode of walking through things works really well for me. I understand it. And so it was great that it worked for this gal also. Um, We came back, we went and left her home of origin and went for a walk where we could talk together outside. Mm. And um, I asked her at one point, you know, are you ready to go back home yet? And she said- yeah, but man, I just really wish we could read a book together. Which and so I was sweet. like, and I, it was so sweet. And I was like, well, I just happened to have, I didn't say this, but I was like, yes, reading those children's books <laughs> one million times <laughs> with my children has a purpose because I have memorized um, the book, book of a children's book. Which and one so, was it? Uh, Good Night Moon. Oh, yeah. It's a, an yeah, old classic book. That. And, mm-hmm. um, and so I was able to just say, well, awesome, babe, let's sit down and I'll read you a book right now. And mm. so, and then, oh man, the Zoom call went bananas and everybody started losing their marbles and Yeah, because you were literally, and, you were reciting the book like you were a mom reading yes. a story to her. And so many people didn't get moms yes. who could read them stories, who yeah. could say, what do you need right now? What do you want yes. right now? And so- you're all of a sudden getting to step in on behalf. Mm-hmm. And that's the beauty of community and why you can heal faster is all of a sudden, if you didn't have a mom, you get to be listening to this. And and what I love about the live consulting and um, heart sinks is you end up crying over other people's lives because yeah. it every connects time to you. Mm-hmm. Every you- time. We, we've never had an experience on there where we weren't crying our eyes out we have a setup where we come to do our immersion program calls and it has, you know, couch and our stuffed animals and blankets and tissues with us <laughs> and they're still around us right here. But those are prerequisites for should, joining the call. We should start selling an LFA starter kit. <laughs> <laughs> True story. I'm just anybody who needs, you got, everybody should own a squish mallow. If you don't know what that is, look it up on the, on the interwebs <laughs> and find, find yourself one and get you one. Oh, uh, that's that. so great. So, so everybody was crying because it hit that mom, like yeah it was and you know it was for like I felt it coming to me also Mm -hmm. you know I felt like there were so many things that I was able to say to my girlfriend that I needed also you needed to hear your whole life I was being able to we talk a lot about in class about um uh, reparenting yourself Mm -hmm. and what that means and um I was doing that actively As I was doing that for her, I had, I had the hero of the day was Francois because not everybody was paying attention, but in the background, he was sitting behind me and, um, he was whispering things to me to say, because I would not have been able to take her the places that I needed to go in that moment. I was internally having a little bit of a freak out because (laughs) I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I haven't even gotten some of these things. I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm starting to fumble. I'm sweaty. God. And and Francois was just, you know, for him, he was calm and collected and was just like, you know, he would, it, 
it totally reminded me of you guys, how you guys sometimes uh-huh. do that. Well, See you guys whisper to each other yeah. on calls and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like, I was like, it just, it felt natural to us to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it was, it was wonderful. So, I mean, my, she didn't even know it, but she was getting mom and dad heart I in that moment. That. You know? cool. oh, That's yeah. so cool. So, so cool. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's listen to that clip. Hi, little Katie. I would like to give the um, oatmeal pot to Mama Lynette, and I'd like to let her take charge of that. She's totally capable of making a new pot, and you do not have to make any more. You don't have to take charge of this. If you want, we can go sit on the couch, just you and me. Or if you want, we could go outside and go for a walk. If you want to go crawl back in bed with me, we can lay there and just be us together. Whatever feels good to you. I want to go for a walk. Awesome. Let's go do that then. Katie, my darling, my dearest, my firstborn, my prize, my precious jewel, the one that I wanted, the one who is the most important to me, the one who does so much. I'm just so happy to be here with you. I'm so happy doing just this thing that you want to do right now. The air is so fresh and we can't hear any of the other kids. Doesn't it feel so good to get away from the house? It feels so good to hold your hand. You bring me so much joy. I love to be with just you. I love you when you do nothing for the other kids. I love you no matter what happens with that stupid oatmeal. Oatmeal's gross anyway. Let's pull the oatmeal out. And you know what? If you don't ever make oatmeal again, that is really okay. I'm so glad that we have Mama Lynette to take care of the oatmeal situation because there's plenty of help to go around for you. You're not the one who has to take charge of all of the things right now. I know it feels that way for you almost all the time. The pressure is immense and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you've been left in charge of so many things. It was never my goal to leave you in charge of so many children, so much responsibility for your sweetheart that needs its own support and love right now. I had you, Katie, because I wanted to love you. I didn't have you so that I would have somebody to take care of all the other kids. Your purpose in life was to be loved, not to care for others. Your purpose right now, while we're walking, and it's so beautiful, and the clouds are so bright, and the flowers are starting to come out. Your purpose is just to be loved, right here and right now. I miss these times with you. There are so many places that were missed like this, these sweet and perfect moments. And I just want to spend the rest of my life giving you these, these sweet moments with just you and mom. You deserve every bit of my attention, every bit of my heart. And Katie, I just want to tell you, so sorry for the places where you had to bear such incredible pain in the midst of helping. I 
I see you holding Tim, like looking at Timothy. And I'm looking at him with you. That picture that we have of him. That moment that you remember in your mind of seeing him. It's such a hard, hard, a terrible spot. I'm so sorry that he left, honey. I'm so sorry. We were so happy to have him. It's so complicated wanting him and knowing that he would be another drain for you. Those are rotten feelings. And you are not bad for having those. <laughs> I love your heart for him. You loved him so much. I see his little imprint on your life. Your love for him was enough. I'm so sorry that you had to be alone in that. Oh my gosh. I just love it. Thank you guys so much for being so vulnerable and engaging so much. I One thing that I was thinking is you guys are getting a lot out of it because you're engaging it so much. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this is something that I hear everybody who has radically been transformed for it. They say like you get out of it what you put into it. How totally. did you guys, this is one, one last thought I have question. How did you guys, because your life is so crazy and busy, you just decided to make it a priority or how have you been able to sustain doing it? Cause everybody, ha everybody has excuses, right? Yes. Like, oh, I'm pretty busy. I don't know if I have the time for that. And I'm like, when Six w kids. W we have people like you guys who show up and we're like, I've sacrificed everything anyways. <laughs> yeah. Um, part of what I've done before actually in the past, like three years is actually taking some other programs, which focused on, you know, overcoming some of those excuses <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and realizing that, you know, are, that's what they are. Um, and so uh, those were actually very challenging in terms of time commitment as well. I mean, I had five yeah. kids instead of six, but you know, it was, those were really tough. So in some ways I had um, a little bit of a leg up on the like ability to commit. Yep. Of, and uh, there's, mm, I would say my heart really believes that I am important and valuable and worth investing in. Oh, and so I came on, into Francois. it Get already it. with that. There's some love missing, as we talked about, totally. but like the thought is there, um, and so I, that that's part of what went into it is is knowing that we can overcome excuses, knowing that working on myself is valuable, even if it takes money, time, energy. Um, I think for me that I would use um, the uh, the analogy of birth because it's so mm. prevalent in my life. <laughs> I've done totally. it so dang many times. <laughs> um, uh, you know. Um, we, there's a saying um, when you're in the middle of labor that um, uh, contractions, um, you can only take them one at a time. You can only be in the one that you're in totally. and you have to let go of it when you're out of it or else you get no break yes. in between. You have to like, and sometimes someone has to tell you, hey, let all the way go of that con of that contraction and have yeah. a break. And so, um, and then you go, oh gosh, yeah, I'm holding my shoulders up. I need to take a drink of water. I got to pee, you know, like all the things totally. that, you know, you need to stop to do. And so um, I think looking at this class so through some of those same lenses of birth and labor has been really helpful to me because I'm like, birth is real hard and it doesn't last forever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and at the end, you get something beautiful that you really want. Yes. And, um, uh, and there is a lot of sacrifice in it. Mm -hmm. um, like for us on a really tangible level, there's a lot of sacrifice for us to do LFA right now. Yeah. We're sacrificing time that we would maybe be, have, be able Date to be nights. hanging out together. Yeah. yeah, that is not happening right now. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, um, and Finances even, and uh, yes, most definitely time with our kids, like time to do really anything else. I have put every other thing on hold for now. Mm -hmm. I'm not really watching any shows I want to watch. I'm not watch. I'm like, you know, I, I never 
to stay up late to do homework, <laughs> but I am staying up. Like I'll go to the bed with the baby and lay in bed and do my wow. homework on wow. my phone while I'm trying to not fall asleep because I'm like, I want this. Mm-hmm. And it is really easy to feel like that thing of like, I, I'm going to get out of this. What I put into it can feel really yucky, oh, totally. it also can feel really empowering. empowering. Yeah. Right. And so, um, when I start to get to that yucky place, I'm like, where it's pressure. Mm-hmm victim mentality a little bit and um i can move out of this so um yeah and so um just realizing that it is a choice and that i'm choosing this and i want to and i think it's going to be worth it yeah and if we were doing just lfa by itself i would probably i mean for one it would free up some time but i bet i would not do better on my homework because i'm not in the immersion program so doing it with other people being in um, you know in zoom meetings with them twice Mm -hmm. a week brings it back to the forefront i'm in a community that's all working together and it kind of um it helps uh it helps me stay engaged more as a result yeah i'm i'm way more motivated relationally Mm -hmm. um and so um being able to see my people every week and like Um, is something that I'm looking forward to amidst the parts that feel like draggy when there's like homework questions that I don't know how to answer or that I'm like, oh, this is so hard. (laughs) And I can be like, I can get on the Facebook page Mm -hmm. and be like, totally. I need help with this question. I hate it and I hate everything. Someone help me. (laughs) And then the moderators and the members, everybody will be, will get on and help. And then there's people connecting outside of the classes through Mm -hmm. like clubhouse Mm -hmm. and what's the other one? Discord and, um, other zoom calls that we've been invited to, to continue on when there's questions about homework or just needing to process and connect. I think, I don't know how people do it without the immersion program. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it would work for me to do it without. And while it is an extra ask, it's the ask that makes it possible it. Yeah. for me. Yeah. For I, sure. we, I like it so much that I thought about taking away your ability to do it without the immersion program. <laughs> like I was like, mm, I, I almost thought, yeah, mandatory. You have to do because the amount of transformation and connection and, and, immersion that people are getting is so much richer with the immersion program but we kept it as an option for people uh because i thought something's better than nothing for people who need it and so for sure um what we do have this year we're for round two we're doing it slightly different just so that everybody understands the you have three options you can sign up for living fully alive the course the course then you can sign up for the immersion program which includes the heart sink and the uh, live consulting sessions. And then you can sign up for the uh, mass, uh, the mentorship plus a certification, which is it includes both the immersion program and the course yeah. inside of it. Because some people last year just wanted the immersion program yeah. and, and they didn't, didn't care necessarily about mentor, care about didn't it. And so we try to figure out how can we create a way that everyone can have access to each portion of it in some yeah. way, shape or form. And then we also have a, and I just, cause I get so many questions about this um, for alumni. If you've done LFA before, um, you get a massive discount on the Living Fully Live. Of course, then yeah. If you want to, you can just add the, the immersion program, program if you want to do that. Yep. Participate. So, so um, yeah, we're. I'm really excited about it. The immersion program has been. I mean, it's literally like it feels like now this course is what I wanted it to be the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it and but, but it's like, taken three years to develop. Like, how is this going to look? What mm-hmm. do we really need? What's the heartbeat of the group of people that are inside of it? What are they needing? What are they experiencing? And it's fun what, fine tuning and going, oh, mm-hmm. this is what we wanted. Yeah. And we have, I mean, so people who've listened to our podcast before, we have Ruth who's been on our podcast before. She's leading a bunch of um, the live consultings. We have Andrew who's been on our podcast. He's lead. And so we have, you're also getting, cause this course is also for people who want to learn more about life consulting. You're getting a lot of different, like I'm sure you guys have noticed Andrew and Ruth's style. Styles are different. If you different, Very different and yep. wonderful, but similar yeah. core values, but yep. very different approaches, mm-hmm. which works differently for different people's hearts. And it makes it so that if you don't connect to, Oh, if you don't connect to something, you're not, 
Um, it, my oop was because I threw my microphone <laughs> cover off. <laughs> um, but uh, if you don't connect to something one person does, you can connect to something somebody else does. Yeah. And then you have a Morgan who's leading the heart sync. And so we have different people. And, and then actually all of the people, because I do a consulting mastermind where I train small groups of people. There's like six people in each group about consulting and we go, do a deeper dive. And then they are in all of the, the rooms as well. They're it's, helping to facilitate. So part of what we're trying to do again is exp- and learning and growing and mm-hmm, is bring mm-hmm. all of the people as, as even as people graduate LFA and who have gone through you know like the mentorship and certification program and stuff, they're able to come back and continue to be part of the global community mm-hmm. and help facilitate transformation inside of that space along with everyone. Yeah, and our dream is one day to figure out more and more ways right. to facilitate I, I, community. How do we keep creating people? community and relationship where there's this kind of again. A deepening of that global family because the thing that's transformed my life the most is not being alone yeah and i think that that's the core human wound is mm. aloneness um, whether i mean you can be surrounded by people and be alone or you can be alone and being yes. alone but the the connection re getting connected i mean that's why we created the connected life because connection is so healing and liberating yeah so i just want to say to kind of wrap it up i really appreciate the two of you being who you are uh sharing your hearts the way you have today i've been having so much fun you're such a delight yes (laughs) (laughs) we enjoy you guys immensely thank you for having us today yeah you guys are so 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 cute and funny and witty and poetic and honest and real and authentic and i was thinking this is the best representation I was of too. the people. I was like, they're a great representation of who's in and how, what LFA is. And of like what the culture that our dream is of this podcast is people who are real and authentic and messy and okay mm-hmm. with being messy and wanting to learn and grow. And so I just feel really thankful and proud of you both for making such huge sacrifices and for allowing yourselves to be seen and known and heard and on the journey and in going deep and i just i one of the reasons i wanted you guys on here is i could literally see you guys carry such depth and so much love and Mm -hmm. um and i know that francois you're like i'm still cracking my heart open but in the in every call i've seen you with you're so heart connected to the people and to what's going on and you're so empathetic and you're so engaged and i um and also you too nina but i feel like you know that about you <laughs> you're maybe not okay you are so <laughs> you, know heart you know that's right <laughs> yeah. you are so heart connected and so loving and so engaged and so present and it's just mm-hmm. really uh, it's an honor that we got to have you guys on the mm-hmm. podcast and have this little face to face zoom yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. When this podcast comes out, I'm going to put it on repeat. Just play that over and over again. <laughs> as you should. As you should. Uh, yeah. Right after I send it out to everybody I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which on that note, if you're listening and you want to share, please feel free. Rate, review, subscribe, and share. Yep. Go to Justin and Abby. That's abi.com to get in on the immersion program this year with us and participate in this whole journey. Yeah. It starts in May. Yeah, it's happening. Uh, I think May 3rd might be the last day for sign up and May 5th is going to be uh, the whole new program happening. Here we go. Here we go. So thank you guys both again for joining us. Gosh, you're awesome. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. you guys. Do you guys have any endings you want to end with? Bleh. You know, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great ending. Bleh. You know, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. You know that's yep. right. You know that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that at the end every time. You know that's right. You know that's right. You know that's right. <laughs> <laughs>